Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. The topic of our discussion today is ureteric repair. The question which arises most commonly in this topic is when is there increased chance of ureteric repair? Ureters tends to be injured during difficult open surgery when we attempt to control bleeding and in cases of laparoscopic and endoscopic procedures. What is the clinical presentation of a patient with ureteric injury? The clinical sign and symptoms include first of all fever, hematuria, flank pain, secondary hypertension, abdominal distension, urinary leakage, abscess formation, peritonitis, retroperitoneal urinoma, and postoperative anuria. In the functional anatomy of the ureter, it's very important to know about its length. The overall length of the ureter is 25 to 30 centimeter. The abdominal part is 12 to 15 cm long and the pelvic part is also 12 to 15 cm in length. Another very important question, the answer of which should be known by every gynecologist and surgeon is that where is the increased chance of ureteric injury? Means, what are the commonest sites of ureteric injury? The commonest sites of ureteric injury include first of all the pelvic brim level where it can be confused with infundibulo pelvic ligament. Secondly, lateral to the ovarian fossa where it can be adherent to an ovarian mass during ovophorectomy. Thirdly, in the ureteric tunnel beneath the uterine artery while clamping, cutting and ligating the McEnrod ligament. And fourthly, anterior to the vagina where it runs into the bladder 2 to 3 cm below the anterior vaginal fornix. Now, what are the commonest types of ureteric repair? Those include ureteral stent or indwelling catheter. Secondly, the end-to-end -end anastomosis. And thirdly, the ureteroneocystostomy. Now, we will talk about the steps of ureteric repair and to end anastomosis technique. The suture material which is used for this purpose is Vicryl 20 or 30. It is delayed, absorbable, maintained potency, and the fine surgery is another property of it. Secondly, we should take care of aseptic measures like there should be sterile cap, mask, and closed shoes. We should do gowning and gloving by using appropriate technique. Carefully mobilize the ureter. To preserve the adventitia or the blood supply. Judiciously debride the non-viable tissue until the edge is bleed. Spatulation of ureteral ends is performed, mean each end of the ureter is divided obliquely to increase the size of the lumen to be innerstmost. The next step is apply stay sutures on both sides. And here you can see how to apply the stay sutures. These stay sutures have very important role in turning the ureters from anterior to posterior and vice versa during repair. After that, the extra mucosal interrupted sutures are applied on the anterior aspect of the ureter. By extra mucosal, we mean that we don't involve mucosa in such sutures. And here you can see the technique of that. After that, the stay sutures are tied on both the sides. Next come the rotation of the ureter. Artery forcep is passed beneath the ureter to rotate it. Next come the repair of posterior aspect. So, extra mucosal interrupted sutures are applied on the posterior aspect as well in a single layer. After that, cut the stay sutures and rotate the ureter back to anterior. Now, a very important question is that how to prevent the ureteral injury? The different measures include first of all, the preoperative bladder drainage. Secondly, awareness of the pelvic anatomy and IVU in distorted anatomy. Secondly, appropriate operative approach, adequate exposure, avoidance of the blind clamping of the blood vessels, ureteric dissection and direct visualization, mobilization of the bladder away from the working field, short diathermy application. The complications of ureteric repair include first of all urinoma, abscess, peritonitis, 
स्ट्रिक्चर हाइड्रोनेफ्रोसिस इन्फेक्शन एंड फिस्टूला फॉर्मेशन सो थैंक यू सो मच दैट वॉज समथिंग अबाउट यूरिथेरिक रिपेयर सब्सक्राइब ऑन ऑफ सेंड गाइनी अल्लाह हाफिज़